I'm going to be talking next about hacking your hacking your AI boss. <laughs> so um, th this one is an interesting topic, hacking your AI boss. <laughs> uh, this one is quite fun, actually, because I think that this is this is important. Like you got to learn. In addition to just being able to uh, be really good at learning AI concepts, you also need to be able to understand what hacking your AI boss looks like. So what do I mean by this? Well, over half of all Gen Z workers are freelancing on AI platforms like Upwork and Fiverr. And so what happens when your boss is an AI and it's not a person? I feel it's more important to learn artificial intelligence than it is to learn programming because our online lives are impacted much more by the results of AI uh, than even by code written by people. So this month, um, this is the creators of uh, OpenAI. So these are the creators of AI that can turn words into, say, blog posts or words into photos and illustrations. Uh, they showed a new product called Codex. Now, Codex turns words into lines of code in ways that we haven't seen generally in the public before. So imagine using just a simple text editor like Microsoft Word. Just by saying, remove all the beginning white space, an AI could write code that would do this in an instant. You could build an online game just by saying, make a small image on the bottom of the screen and then make this character move when I press the arrow keys. Coding won't just be for those who understand programming syntax and those that have done, say, visual coding uh, in programs like Scratch. Uh, we need to understand understand how to say just we only need to understand basic instructions like to make basic instructions and then the rest of it can be taken care of by an AI. Now Codex works because AI is a system of replicating the past. It uses lots of data to try to repeat what we have done before. So for example it's really easy for a program to write a web page that says Hello world, because there are so many examples of this online. So since AI tries to replicate the past, it can also replicate any bias or prejudices that we have had in the past. And if we're not careful, uh, especially if we're not careful about the data that it's trained with. It can also be good if we want to hack our AI boss. So for example, let's say you're on Fiverr and you search for people who design web pages. Well, if we look at the postings of those who are more successful than us, we can copy their keywords uh, and we can look to their reviews to see what people appreciate from this particular freelancer. And if we put these words directly into our profile, it'll be easier to stand out from the other posts and the AI will see a profile that closely matches other successful posts. So it'll, it'll try to think, oh, I should, I should be highlighting this post. And so I don't think they need to know as much about coding um, if they can understand some of the, I think computational thinking is a little bit closer to what I would describe as something that is important to understand and less on the coding aspect. Um, and that, it's, it's quite uh, surprising, I would say, the, the stuff that we are seeing online these days that relates to artificial intelligence and how much that is advancing. Uh, another example that I saw this week, uh, wh which, which happened this month, which was released this month, is um, comma.ai. So comma.ai is a... It w it's an AI algorithm in order to do automatic driving. Now, you may have already seen something like this on a Tesla. Uh, like, say, a Tesla Model 3 um, has not only lane keeping assist and automatic uh, like adaptive cr cruise control, where it will follow in the, in the right lane, uh, but it can, it can go further, where it can actually like, drive like, with the GPS. It can use the GPS functionality. So uh, comma.ai is just like a small little dash cam 
that you put on the front of your car. And what it does is essentially the same thing as the Tesla Autopilot, except it's it works with a lot of existing cars uh, through their ODBC connector, uh, ODB connector. So basically there's a common connector, common protocol, that actually allows you to control things like the steering wheel, sometimes it allows you to control braking uh, and things like that as well. And what I find interesting about this uh, particular technology is it means that it's becoming more widely available. And it means that certain types of jobs, um, maybe it could be like transportation, um, there, it's becoming easier, right, to start this. Now I don't need to be like a pro at driving, like the car pretty much drives by itself. I'm there just to, to make sure that there's no major accidents happening. Um, it becomes like, it makes the entire experience of driving, uh, they describe it as more chill. And I think that in Alberta, um, this may be something that could have a big impact on transportation, um, and what we what we do in the future, like this presence of automation. And so we need to consider, well, in this world of automation, outsourcing, digitization, what are those skills that we, we need critically in order to make sure that our children thrive now and in the future? So the examples that I would, I would say is like the way I see freelancing is it's the scary thing about freelancing is that the cost, and this is something I've, I've said um, in the past, is that when you are using one of those platforms like Fiverr or Upwork, uh, the cost of outsourcing, like of finding somebody else in a different region, is effectively zero, right? There's, there's no cost. So if somebody else that you see has a really good rating, why would you pay more, right, for the, the same skill set or the same, same work? Uh, and so this is what we mean by we have to be ready to compete in a global workplace. Things are changing a lot in the field of education.